Getting to the quarterback is often the difference between victory and defeat in the NFL. We can perhaps see this philosophy shine through the most in San Francisco, who literally cannot help but invest in their defensive line. This last year alone, they brought in guys like Chase Young, Randy Gregory, and Cleveland Farrell to name a few. But with them being backed up against the cap space, many if not all of those players will leave. Which gives us a great opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into San Francisco's defensive line depth. Specifically in this video, we'll be examining Drake Jackson, the former second round pick. To start out the year, Jackson was honestly pretty dominant, but then he had knee tendonitis and most recently has undergone surgery. But if Jackson is able to regain his early season form, they might actually see an uptick in their production from their defensive line. One thing you'll know if you watched any of my videos so far about defensive linemen is how much I love a defensive lineman who keeps his motor running. And Jackson, every time he stepped on the field, never looked sluggish, never looked like he wasn't putting in full effort, but much like he did on this sack, he kept his motor running and it often led to good things. Coming out of USC, Jackson was a little undersized, and if I'm honest, the biggest question mark I had was his playing strength. But after one year in San Francisco's weight room, you can see how Jackson is able to drive back a tackle all the way into Kenny Pickett's lap before breaking off to get the sack. These are the type of plays San Francisco was hoping between Jackson and Bosa to enter this year. In addition to that, I loved how San Francisco was getting the most out of Jackson's athleticism by utilizing stunts on less athletic tackles. You'll see on this play for instance, how Eric Armstead driving out this guard makes it extremely hard for this tackle to keep up with Jackson just because of his raw athleticism. One of the most surprising aspects for me though, despite being only a second year player, Jackson looks extremely prepared to take on any task Chris Kacarek and this defensive line asks out of him. On this play for instance, you can see how the Rams are running a screen. Jackson immediately identifies this, breaks off, and then stops Puka Nukua, and this could have easily been a pickup for a first down. It was third and 13, and if you look in front of him, he just has open space. These are the type of plays to indicate to me Drake Jackson didn't get lucky to start the season, but rather, that's the player he is, and he's just been hampered by injuries. To further highlight this point, take this play from Drake Jackson. He clearly won't get to Matthew Stafford for the sack, but he gets his hands up in the air to disrupt this pass to Tyler Higby. In addition to that, you see how Drake Jackson ties up Higby nicely to make sure he doesn't get a clean release, also disrupting the timing of this play. The best part about Jackson's game though is he has the ability to continue to improve. Take a play like this, Jackson is one of the first defenders off the line of scrimmage and nearly gets a sack on Matthew Stafford. If in the future he's one step quicker, that's a sack and maybe even a sack fumble. But even this pressure does force a dump off from Matthew Stafford. While I've been focusing on what Jackson does in the passing game, one of the most surprising aspects this last year was watching how strong he is in the running game. On this play for instance, he sets up an edge that causes the running back to bounce back inside and he even throws down the tackle for good measure. So while at first glimpse you're sold on Drake Jackson because of his pass rush specialty, the fact is I believe he can develop into a bookend opposite of Nick Bosa. In his first two years alone, he has six sacks on the defensive line loaded with talent and Chris Kisarek might be able to get even more out of him going into this following year. In addition to his ability to getting to a quarterback he's shown off his first two years, Jackson has also shown an ability to bat down passes, something San Francisco has kind of been missing. In his first two years, with minimal playing time for instance, he has 9 passes deflected. Heck, Jackson even has an interception, and while this interception probably won't happen again like this, I do love how Jackson is one of the more aware players I've noticed on the field. So with Drake Jackson's first two years with San Francisco out of the way, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into a player that I think can become one of the better players on San Francisco's roster. Drake Jackson's football career began in Corona, California at Centennial High School where he played defensive end, and as a senior he was defensive player of the year after recording 50 tackles and 8 sacks. One of the biggest things that stood out to me about Drake Jackson is how quickly he would get in the backfield during his high school days. Often, the quarterback would get the ball and immediately be sacked by Jackson. In addition to that, Jackson showed essentially no weakness in the run game, routinely stopping ball carriers for minimal gain. I'm not the only one who noticed his absolute dominance on the field either. 24-7 Sports had Drake Jackson ranked as a 4-star recruit and even the 10th best player in the state of California. With this sheer dominance came offers from the likes of Illinois, Arizona State, Oregon, Washington, and even USC. 
Jackson did decide to stay close to home and commit to USC. During Jackson's first year at USC in 2019, many believed he would develop into a defensive end that would be selected in the top five of an NFL draft. He had 11.5 tackles for loss this year and 5.5 sacks. During this year, Jackson was listed as 275 pounds and asked to primarily play on the defensive line. Later, he was asked to lose some of this weight and then play linebacker, and I think this is where Jackson really started to struggle. I don't think he's a traditional linebacker, but really excels playing defensive line. The following years, for example, when Jackson was asked to play a lot more linebacker, do things like drop into coverage, you saw his sack numbers as well as his tackles for loss going down. Jackson also was asked to lose weight during this period, dropping 25 pounds from his freshman year, which undoubtedly had a major impact on where he was drafted. When you're looking at his stats for 2020, for example, he only had five and a half tackles for loss and two sacks. In 2021, he saw an uptick having eight tackles for loss and five sacks. After this 2021 season, Drake Jackson did decide to commit to the 2022 NFL Draft, and with that, scouts had the opportunity to dive a little bit deeper into his film. The first thing scouts noticed about Drake Jackson is how quick he really is. He was often the first player off the ball and this is extremely important in San Francisco's wide nine system that prioritizes defensive linemen flowing up the field to pressure opposing teams quarterbacks. Jackson was the ideal fit San Francisco was looking for. In addition to that, Jackson took no time to find the field, being a three-year starter for the Trojans. And while Jackson was played out of position throughout his time at USC, when he was lined up against an offensive lineman, something that became obvious is how toolsy of a pass rusher he was. He seemingly had an answer for everything the opposing offensive lineman was trying to do to him. In addition to that, Drake Jackson is an absolute freak athletically. You'll see him doing backflips, and even Nick Bosa of all people has commented of how he's jealous of Drake Jackson's been. Outside of these comments though, when you're just looking at his numbers, they're pretty impressive. He's right around 6'3", weighing 250 pounds coming out of his combine, but maybe the most impressive thing is his 40-yard dash of 4.5 seconds. Side of his crazy athleticism though, scouts did look at his run support as a potential problem. While he did have a nice initial pop, his lack of weight allowed him to be driven back at times. So going forward, scouts would really like to see Jackson add weight to be a rotational pass rush piece or even a three down lineman. Even with these concerns though, San Francisco saw a defensive lineman who really probably should have been a first round pick if USC utilized him properly, but they were lucky enough to get him with a 61st pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. And if I was to bet, San Francisco probably is exactly where they want to be with Drake Jackson. They knew it was going to take about a year to add the necessary mass to make him an effective NFL piece. And while he did have a setback due to injury this year, I think going into 2024, Drake Jackson might just be in line for a breakout season. While this season was hampered by injury, to start the year, I was impressed by the mass and strength he was able to add. Going into this offseason, Jackson should receive more opportunity to add the mass and size he's been lacking, and this could really be the turning point for a career that's looked promising up to this point. But I'd like to hear your thoughts and who you'd like to see opposite of Nick Bosa next year. It would also mean a ton to me if you liked and subscribed. And as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.